Theatre was by Bread and Puppet Theatre, and they made banners and they would they use text and image together, and they use you know they use block printing where they made very rudimentary uh, linoleum cuts and print those on banners, and they print little scarves and they print you know like things to sell and they make books and they sort of make stuff. And my idea, I think, when I first became an artist was I wanted to like be an artist so I could end up in Macy's. That was like my dream. Like I wanted to really make sheets and be, make you know decorative objects and items because I grew up um, in a house with no furniture and basically nothing. So I was always like the greedy one in the family who wanted like dishes and wanted you know every single thing visually. Were the first prints that I made for in 1980 for a group of collaborative projects. We had a, a show in Times Square and then we made a store. And so that was like I got to start fulfilling my fantasy life of being in a shop. But, um, and then eventually I started making prints. And, and so this was a couple of years in. And, but I realized the other day that this was, I had met Nancy Spiro by this time. And she, you know, I used rubber stamps or I made silk screens and she sent me to where she got all her type, photo type made for, um, for um, you know, making her images. And she also did that. You know, she was an enormous, she was sort of my hero, but she was an enormous um, uh, sort of person that I looked to as a precedent for things that I was interested in or that I was doing already, but I didn't know anybody else that was doing such things. And that she had, you know, this enormously rich, I think, you know, practically 2,000 or something, uh, plates that then she could interchange and move around and have them have, you know, also this thing of having multiple lives, like each one could be juxtaposed or uh, put next to, you know, in relationship to other ones and over in, in a billion different ways and using language, which which I sort of stopped for the most part after a while. But, but like, this was originally a book of hours, so there were 365, or a book of days, 365 um, uh, images so that you could look at one, like, make a meditation on it. This is another version of that that you can't see. But, um, and, and then for me, what I discovered very quickly, I had a residency at the Lower East Side print shop, and I got a key, you know, I could go in when I wanted, and I made this uh, image of the digestive system, and very quickly I realized like I was sort of out of my depth of, of, of being able to really print that size and stuff, and, but right at 1990, Bill Goldston from ULAE came and he saw a very big silkscreen print that I had made where I silkscreen pieces of paper and glued them together. And he asked me to come make prints with him. And so I went and I made this print. It was my first uh, etching, I guess. Uh, and then afterwards, I lay it down on the floor and I covered it with saran wrap and then lay clay on top of it. Um, so, and then I made a, this was a cast iron, you know, sculpture of the intestines. So for me, it's um, like in one hand, going to ULA, they were out in Long Island. So it was like on one hand, I thought, oh, well, nobody sees, like nobody will ever see this, what I do, so I can just sort of do anything I want here. And also they told me just not to bring anything, just to bring myself. And so in a certain way, for a long time, I made portraits. But this was also an etching. Um, you know, but then I could take that and then trace that or draw that into uh, clay and then pull waxes off of it, which was the same thing. Um, I think this was the second print I made. With it, which was also just learning how to make prints. These were lithographs. They were very strict. You know, like you could, we could make a couple of lithos and then I could make an etching. And, um, you know, but I made a lot of it on using a Xerox machine. And then this was another one. Uh, and then uh, later I was asked uh, by the mattress factory in Philadelphia, no, in Pittsburgh, to go there and I went to the, um, 
Carnegie Mellon Museum and I went and looked, they had like a bird library where you could take out birds. You know, and I, I went there and then I came home on the airplane with this big box of birds, you know, which is like, you know, to have a songbird feather in the United States is, or is a thousand dollar fine. And, you know, I had my like papers and I had all this, these dead birds carrying around. But, um, but I made these blank, all these blankets, but then the blankets, um, I made them first as blankets and a couple of piles of these blankets all over the floor. And then, uh, no, it's not true. First I made them as a long processional print that was about 16 feet long. And then I made them as the blankets for the exhibition. But then I made them into rubber stamps and pulled molds off of them and cast waxes of them. So then I could make them into uh, yeah, these big long friezes of dead birds. You know, like the last, I guess, 30 years of my life has been this thing of sort of just going back and forth between printmaking and uh, and sculpture and jewelry and cloth and kind of mixing it all up together, but using for more than not using some kind of printmaking matrix as the beginning of something or as a model uh, for something like these were i went in 94 to alfred university and did a residency there and um, that that's when i started making the birds i guess and then and then after i went the next like two weeks later i went to harvard and uh, to mass college of art uh, to do a residency for a long time and then I would go to Harvard and draw animals because they didn't move and, um, at the museum but then, and then I drew people later but I started making photo lithos or photo etchings uh, you know which were lithography printing and those the deer was an etching but the figure was a litho um, and then I started making them like cartoons or like my that's really where my father saying the octahedrons and tetrahedrons came in was like, because I could have piles of these different images, like a repertoire theater, and then mix them all up together. But, but because you can just take a piece of paper, you can cut it up and collage it very easily. On paper, you can do that in two seconds. You can chop something up and you can leave it, you know, that you see the rupture of the line, like you don't have to fill it in because your eye fills it in. Uh, but then I started making sculptures like that. So I, I cast a friend of mine uh, who I'd done a lot of drawing, and she always said I can do anything with her but put hair on her. But I cast her just standing up straight, and then the deer, you know, I got like a um, uh, taxidermy, you know, foam that you get in the mail or something for, for taxiderming your deers. For, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, and then just put clay on it and use that as my model. But then it was the same thing. I could just take from my drawings. I thought, oh, then I can chop her up and have her go that way or chop her up. You know, I made this wolf and then had her walking out of the wolf. And, you know, it's a very different thing to start chopping wax and try to put it back together than, than paper. But it just gives, you know, for me, the paper printmaking and just this way of not making like addition. You know, I do make, I make lots of additions, but uh, not making additions, just making random stuff that then you can have for 20 years and reuse. You know, this is essentially the same image of the woman. The woman walking out of the, of the wolf came from the story of Little Red Riding Hood, because I thought about how, you know, it's just a, a strange image of a woman walking out of a wolf. And then, then I made this more literal one, um, but I always thought it's really like about horizontal and verticals, and like like how the Virgin Mary sits on the moon. You know, like when you have the kind of sculpture that has two two different directions. Um, and then these were the same. Like at the same time, I drew the wolf at, when I was at Harvard, and the birds I drew later, but the wolf I drew, and so I had that as. Um, as these photo lithos, and then I would just uh, transfer that onto clay and draw it in clay, and then so it's you know it's very similar to if you saw the printed image, it's very similar. It's just and it's very low relief. It's just flat. You know, it's just putting um, 
painting waxes together and then piecing them together. You see that, uh, you know, then that there's a correlation. And, or like, yeah, like this one, the moths and the stars are all made from rubber stamps, stamping into clay. Uh, and that's all made from drawing in clay uh, patterns. And these are the same thing, like the owls are from, from etchings of owls. <coughs> and this is the same from using wood, like laser wood cuts now, you know, like and then hammering those into clay and then using that relief as a, you know, the printing of the, of the wood into the clay and using that as a form for making sculpture. And the same with the heads, they were all cut, laser cut in wood first. And then, oh, and that's nice because then you can also take all that wood and make rubbings of them, you know, which is another way to make a print. And then you can take your prints and uh, lay them out on tables and make, these are stained glass paintings, but they were, you know, you use a print as a traditional cartoon that you would use for stained glass or for, uh, also for tapestry. You know, and then you build it up by painting. And then this is a tapestry uh, made in the same way of, you know, I think there's probably some owls or something from those other, you know, those owls up there, the owls that were in that other sculpture, or um, the deer also, the fawn is from Harvard, and the bats are from Harvard, and the squirrels. So, you know, you can just, and then these are just scraps of, of lithos that are chopped up and then they were woven. You know, and the, and the thing with tapestry making is that you also make a full-size cartoon when you make it. Um, I mean, you can do things in computers, but it, there's something very nice about making something in real life stuff. So. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe that was you drawing. This is the, the woven one. Uh, this is the matching of a turkey. This, I this one with a lot of turkeys. <laughs> My role for a lot of turkeys. And that's also, you know, like, I moved out of the city. Uh, I mean, I've had a place on stay for about 10 years, or 11, or 12 years now, or something like that. But, um, but I kind of moved slowly, gradually away, and, and it affected very greatly my work. I think it's very good at this moment not to be in. This is the same thing. These are made by making rubber stamps of birds, and I made different ones, and um, and then pressing them into clay, and then then I made also. Then you can take you, know, you can take that and scan it, and then make a large one. And these are also for making prints and then drawing on glass. And those are the same ones in the textile. Mm -hmm. I'll just zip through this because I'm not supposed to stop, but. This is from using photopolymer plates into clay. And this is from using rubber stamps into clay and making something small and then digitally blowing it up that it's, it's like over 10 feet. And this is also, if you ever have to give away things, it's really great to make rubber stamp. <laughs> I try to make 100 every summer. And then that's it cut in, in, that was it cut in wood and then made a mold off and cast in the And like these are also the same where they're cut in wood and painted. And that's a rubber. Mm -hmm. These are wood, drawings of wood, or prints of wood, and then these are sculptures that came from the wood. And these are cyanotypes, which is another nice way to use a etching matrix, and etching in plexiglass, but then printing them photographically as a cyanotype. I think that's it.